Hello, class. Today we are going to be reading chapters three and four of Ivy and Dean. So, without further ado, let's get started. Chapter three, The Ghost of Pancake Court. Bean was hiding inside a big round of bush in her front yard. The bush was right next to the sidewalk, and it was very scratchy and sticky inside. But Bean needed to be in the bush for her plan to work. Here's how Bean's plan went. She took a $20 bill out of Nancy's purse and taped it to a long thread, taped a long thread to it. She put the $20 bill on the sidewalk. Then she held on to the other end of the thread and climbed onto the bush. Nancy would be coming home from school soon. She would see the money on the sidewalk. She would bend down to pick it up. Bean would quickly pull the money away and then Nancy would freak out. Bean could hardly wait. There was only one problem. Nancy didn't come. Bean sat inside the bush for a long time. A branch poked her arm, leaves fell down her shirt. She itched, she waited, nothing happened. It was very quiet. Bean was hardly ever this quiet for this long, because there was nothing else to do. She looked at the house across the street. Really, it wasn't across the street. It was around the street. Bean loved her street. The first reason was its name, Pancake Court. The second reason was that it ended in a big circle right in front of Bean's house. Her dad called it a cul-de-sac. Bean called it cool. If Bean started riding her bicycle at the end of the block and pedaled really, really hard, she could whiz around the circle, tilting over the sidewalk like a motorcycle racer. Slam! Bean looked up. She saw Ivy come out onto her front porch and plop down on the top step. Bean squinted at her. Ivy looked strange. She wasn't wearing a dress today. She was wearing a black bathrobe with lots of little pieces of paper stuck to it. Weird, thought Bean. She squinted some more. Instead of a big book, Ivy was carrying a stick, painted gold. Bean made a face. With a goony costume, she thought. What a goony costume, she thought. What a dork. Oh, that Bean. Ivy sat. She didn't say anything. She just sat there all by herself. That was another strange thing about Ivy. She didn't mind being alone. She never played with anyone. Bean played with everyone. Big kids, little kids, all the kids in the neighborhood played with Bean. Even crummy Matt, who was so crummy he threw other kids' toys into the road, wanted to play with Bean. She took care of the little kids. When they fell down and got blood all over their knees, Bean would take them home and to get band-aids. <laughs> the big kids let her play with them because she had good ideas, like seeing how many backyards they could cross without touching the ground. Bean loved big groups of kids playing big games, like pirates or hide-and-seek. Sometimes Bean wished she were an orphan, so she could live in an orphanage with a hundred other kids. Of course, she didn't tell her mother and father that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Bean watched Ivy alone on her front porch. Wasn't she lonely? Now Ivy was muttering something that Bean couldn't hear. And then she began to wave the stick in the air. Bean couldn't stand it anymore. What the heck are you doing? Yelled Bean from inside her bush. Ivy looked all around. Bean forgot that Ivy couldn't see her. What's with the stick? she yelled. Ivy's got big Ivy's eyes got big. Who's there? she said. Are you a ghost? A ghost? What a great idea. Bean made her voice scratchy and spooky. Yes, she howled. I am the ghost of Mr. Killop. I lived in your house before and I died there too. Mr. Killop had actually moved to Ohio, but Bean thought it was more interesting to say he had died. I've come to haunt you, 
Tonight, when you're sleeping, I'll wrap my icy fingers around your neck. Oh, Bean. She's a little silly girl. Bean, what are you yelling about? Oops, it was Nancy. Bean meets Ivy. Bean peeked out between the leaves. Nancy hadn't seen the $20 bill. She was standing on it. Hmm, <clears throat> thought Bean. Her plan was a bust. But if she... But if she kept being on being a ghost, maybe she could scare Nancy a little. I'm going to wrap my fingers around your neck too, she howled in her spooky voice, and I'm going to spit in your ear. No, you're not, said Nancy. She didn't sound scared. She reached into the bush, the bush and yanked Bean out. Stop yelling. That's when she saw the $20 bill. Hey, she said, where did you get that money? You don't have $20. Then she saw the string. I see what you're doing, burp face. I bet this money, this is my money too. Then she picked up the bill and looked at it. You stole my money. I'm telling mom. She began to pull Bean toward the front door. Uh-oh, thought Bean. None of her ideas were working out today. Now she had two choices. She could go inside with Nancy and face mom, or she could run. So Bean fell over on the ground and started to wail. My ankle! Ow, 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 ow! My ankle's, it's killing me. It's sprained. She held her ankle, her ankle. Nancy frowned. You didn't sprain your ankle, you faker, she said. But she bent down to take a look. That was all Bean needed. She stood up and ran. She ran out of her yard and ran around Pancake Court until she found herself in front of Ivy's house. Ooh, you're in trouble now, Bernice. Bernice Blue yelled Nancy. Bernice Blue. Bernice Blue yelled Nancy. I'm going to tell Mom. Bernice was Bean's real name. People used it only when they were yelling at her. Bean couldn't help it. She just had to stick her tongue out and say, <laughs> <laughs> Then she had to turn around and wiggle her behind at, behind at Nancy. That's it, Nancy yelled. I'm getting mom. She stormed into the house for she stormed into the house. For a minute, Bean felt happy. She loved making Nancy mad. But when Nancy was gone, Bean began to worry. Mom hated it when she did more than one thing bad at a time. <laughs> Bean counted taking the money, lying about her ankle leaving the yard without asking, and wiggling her behind at Nancy. Four things. Five if you counted pretending to be a ghost. Bean was going to be in big trouble. How big? No dessert for sure. No videos for a week, maybe. But it could be even worse. Her mom might send her to her room for the rest of the day. Bean hated that. Hide. Bean looked up. She had forgotten all about Ivy. Ivy was still sitting on her porch. She had been watching the whole time. She knew that the ghost of Mr. Killop was really Bean inside the bush. Bean expected her to be mad, but she didn't look mad. She looked excited. Hide, she said again. Hmm, hmm thought Bean. Maybe boring Ivy was right. If her mom couldn't find her, she couldn't send her to her room. If she stayed out until dark, her parents would stop being mad and start being worried. Her mom might say, oh, my poor little bean, my poor little baby. Then they'd be so happy to, to see her when she came limping home that they probably wouldn't punish her, her, her at all. They might even let her have seconds on dessert. I don't know if I would be very happy with that. <laughs> that settled it. Okay, she said to Ivy, where? Follow me. Ivy came down the stairs and slipped behind a bush growing against her house. Bean followed her and crouched down under the wide leaves. No, get up. This is just the beginning, said Ivy. I'm going to take you to a secret spot. This isn't it, asked Bean. The bush looked pretty good to her. No, this is the passageway. Ivy pressed her back against the house and edged along. Bean edged along too, the wall scraping her back. They turned a corner and edged some more. Ivy's house was big. Halt, said Ivy. Bean halted. Now, said Ivy, close your eyes and I'll take you to the secret spot. 
What? How come I have to close my eyes? Because it's a secret, said Ivy. Duh. Bean couldn't argue with that. Ivy looked like a wimp, but she didn't take, talk like one. Bean closed her eyes. She felt Ivy take her by the elbow, and together they went down some steps. A door opened. More steps. Cool. Damp air blew in Bean's face, and then they went up some steps. Another door opened. They were outside again. Ivy was taking Bean through some tall grass. Shh, said Ivy suddenly. Bean froze. Crouch down, said Ivy. Bean crouched down. There was a silence. Okay, you can get up now. What happened? Oh, what happened? asked Bean. Spies, said Ivy. Bean figured Ivy was probably making that up. Now you can open your eyes, Ivy said. All right. Ivy hatches a plan. I think that's it. Do we read two chapters? I guess so. All right, boys and girls, we'll be back with what Ivy's plan is. Hope you enjoyed our two new characters.